Hi guys, welcome to Amy's Cooking. I am so excited today to be sharing this new recipe with you. I've been working on this for a little while, so I hope you will not be disappointed, but I promise this honey butter uh, dinner roll recipe is gonna be one that you will go to time after time. Look how soft it is. It is so, so, so airy, fluffy, soft. When I press down on it, it bounces right back and it stays like this for days. And even then, you can pop it in the microwave and it comes right back to life. Look at the inside of this dinner roll. So much gluten has developed. There's millions of tiny air pockets in here that makes this roll so soft and light and fluffy. It just melts in your mouth. And with the addition of the butter and the honey in this roll, it just makes it one with so much flavor and is going to be one that I promise you will love. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start out with measuring the milk. This is cold milk straight out of the fridge. And we are looking at about a little over three fourths of a cup and it comes out to exactly two 100 mls is what you need and if you're using cups and spoons please follow the video in detail because i will be sharing you with you exactly how to measure so we will need to warm this milk up uh, for about 40 seconds once the milk has been warm we will add to this about two-thirds of a tablespoon of sugar which comes out to exactly 10 grams Give it a quick mix and make sure that the sugar is mostly dissolved. Once you've done that, we will add to it two packages of yeast. Um, these are the pre-packaged ones. They're about uh, one tablespoon if you pour them into a tablespoon. And I know that I'm proofing the yeast here and it says rapid rise, but honestly, it's just best to prove all of your yeast. I have used these in the past where it could have been um, some other factor and the yeast were dead. So now I've learned every single time I use, I always prove everything. It just really is good practice, especially if you're already spending all of the money and the time into making a recipe. You might as well just make sure it's not the yeast that's going to ruin the recipe. So give it a quick mix and then we are going to put some food wraps on it and cover it up really tightly and then put it back into the microwave and let it proof for about five minutes. In the meantime, we can make our butter honey egg mixture. You need four tablespoons, which is about half of a stick of butter. We're gonna melt this in the microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds. And we will also add to it two tablespoons of honey. We are using sugar in this recipe, but the addition of the honey really gives it a more intense type of sweetness, and that is also going to help keep the rolls moist. You also need a large size room temperature egg, and of course we'll have to balance out the sweetness, so you'll need one and one third teaspoons of salt. We'll also need an additional three tablespoons of sugar, so anywhere between 40 to 45 grams of sugar. Go ahead and mix everything up until it's fully incorporated, and then we will switch gear and talk about the dry ingredients. So here I'm using bread flour. So I'm using bread flour in place of all purpose because it does have a higher protein content. The higher protein content is what's going to help increase that gluten development and give you more uh, rise to your dough and, and the bread to be a lot more fluffy and airy inside. Now, when it comes to measuring the dry ingredients using cups and spoons, I always hesitate because we all kind of pour differently or we scoop or we packed the dry ingredients. So if you are using cups and spoons, please follow the video uh, so you can see how I measure. So using a cup, we're just going to loosely pour the flour into it and then level it with something straight. You should end up about two cups and an extra three-fourths of a cup. And that, if you're using a scale, should come out to exactly 400 uh, grams of flour. 
Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and combine all of our ingredients. This is the yeast mixture that we bloomed. Look how foamy it is. This is exactly what you're looking for when you're proofing yeast. Go ahead and add this to your flour. And if you see that it hasn't changed, then it's not good yeast. And also add in your butter honey egg mixture. We will be using a stand mixer today and we're going to be using a hook attachment to knead this dough. Go ahead and put it on stir for about one minute until you see that your dough has attached itself to the hook. At that point, increase the speed to number four. You're going to knead this dough for about 10 to 12 minutes and I will show you exactly uh, when you need to stop depending on not really the timing that's just an approximate but the actual consistency and the way your dough looks so this is about five minutes into the kneading process you can see it's no longer tacky it's starting to become very smooth you'll continue that until you get to about 10 minutes at the end of the 10 minutes check your dough if you see that it's already like this where it doesn't really stick to your finger when you touch it and it's very smooth and it is, doesn't look tacky or you know wet then you already go ahead and scrape down the size of the bowl um, otherwise you go for another two to three minutes okay go ahead and remove the hook and take out the dough and i want to kind of show you what it is that you're looking for in your dough to be able to get the light airy fluffy texture of the dinner roll that we're looking for so the stretch test is always something that you can't go wrong with essentially what it is is you just pull out a piece of dough and stretch it as far as you can and it should be super super stretchy that means that the dough has been kneaded to the point where you need it to uh, be to get that very fluffy texture now go ahead and add that to a well greased um, closed lid bowl and I want you to pay attention to uh, the amount that is occupying right now. So it's pretty small, but once that it is fully uh, risen, it's going to be about double the size. So close up the lid and we're going to prove this dough in the oven. We're going to preheat the oven to the lowest temperature that your oven has, which mine is 175. Preheat it for only one minute. And then at the end of the one minute, you're going to shut off the oven and place the dough in the middle rack. Now go ahead and turn on the oven light and set the timer for one hour and 30 minutes. That's usually about how long it takes my dough to rise, but yours might take a little bit longer or a little bit quicker just have to keep an eye on it but essentially at the one hour and 30 minute mark this is how my dough looks like it is a sweet dough so it will take longer for it to rise it's just the way it is but you can see the bottom of the bowl the dough kind of occupy all of that space and when you, i pull it up you can see how stretchy it is and how much gluten has formed this is the consistency that you want your dough to look like um you know at the end of the one hour and 30 minutes or as long as your dough gets to the point where it looks like this you're pretty much ready to go now go ahead and remove it and we are going to uh, take a look at the dough and how it looks like see how stretchy it is and how smooth it is okay now you can measure it if you want to be exact and then um, divide into how many ever pieces you want I'm not going to even lie, we love this dinner rose. Every single time I make it, they eat a whole bunch of it. So there's no point for me to make small ones. I always make big ones. So my baking tray or pan can hold up to 12 um, big size rolls. So I divide mine into 12 and essentially each one of my weighs about 64 grams. So you want to grease your baking tray really, really well and line them up with uh, each of these little balls that you roll your dough into. 
Now, um, when you are rolling the dough into these small balls, you want to make sure that you take out the large air bubbles that are in there. And when you're rolling it with the palm of your hand, um, when you're shaping it, you want to kind of tighten it up. The tighter the ball is, the better that the gluing is going to form. Um, it will avoid having these really huge pockets of air and making your uh, dinner rolls kind of hollow. So also, I just want to mention, uh, if you're new to my channel, if you don't mind, uh, if you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you don't miss my um, next video. And if you've already subscribed, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, watching my videos and I really appreciate you being uh, one of the subscribers. So now that all of the balls has been shaped, go ahead and brush it with a little bit of butter and cover it up with uh, food wraps. And we're going to, again, proof this dough in the oven the same way we did with the uh, first time. At 175 degrees, one minute, shut off the oven and then let it rest for about an hour and 30 minutes. If you take a look here, you can see that all the buns are now touching side to side. Remember when I first lined them up after shaping them, I left a lot of spaces in between them. So this is a good sign and you kind of know when it gets to this stage, it's ready to be baked. And that butter kind of gives it a very nice shine on top. So we are going to bake uh, these buns at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to bake it for 17 minutes. Uh, we're going to put it in the middle rack. And here we are with our finished honey butter dinner rolls. They smell so amazing and they look gorgeous. A very nice golden brown. And once you brush a little bit of melted butter on these buns, I cannot guarantee how many you can eat. You will probably not stop at one. All right, guys, I hope you really like this video. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, again, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you don't miss my next video. Enjoy.